Oh, it's ranting time. Why, Disney? Why? After everything I've done for you, I've uh, supported you, stood by your side, defended you from all the naysayers and, and uh, people boycotting you, calling you woke uh, and other, uh, other stupid names, and even put one of your movies as, your, as my favorite movie of all time, a movie that is far from one of your most uh, critical, critically acclaimed movies. This is how you re- repay me. With this shit of a movie. Hey guys, this is Frozen Ding Studios here, and welcome back to another rant video. And this is not an, an ordinary rant I am doing. This is another one of my biggest rants that I'm doing on my channel, basically with the tit- title if you can see. And this time around, I am going to be doing a rant on the worst Disney movie of all time, Artemis Fowl. So Artemis Fowl is a movie that is based on a book series and came out in the year uh, 2020, uh, aka uh, COVID's year, uh, and it is uh, directed by Kana Brana, why him out of all people, and it stars Fer- Ferdia Shaw, Colin Farrell, Lara McDonnell, Josh Gad, Tamara Smart, uh, more like Tamara Dumb, uh, um, no, non so Anzoni, Anozi, uh, Joshua McGuire, Judy Dench, uh, etc. And so, uh, basically, the plot for Iris Fowl, if you can even call this a plot, uh, it tells the story of this. Uh, of Artemis Fowl, the title character, who a, a 12 year old uh, genius, and uh, he is uh, part of a uh, criminal family. Uh, he, um, criminal family whose uh, father uh, apparently uh, disappeared in uh, a business trip or whatever, or whatever you want to call it. And so basically, he uh, basically, like around the mansion, he, he, he searches for he searches for clues uh, to be able to um, find his father, which means. Uh, Kidnapping fairies, uh, hiring weird guys, uh, teaming up with his butler, and yada yada yada. I I don't care. Yeah, screw it. There's no story, no story at all. So yeah. So yeah. Fun fact, guys. Artemis Fowl was my least anticipated movie of twenty twenty. Yep, uh, my least anticipated movie of that year. I think. Some of you may be uh, f- familiar with the history of Artemis Fowl. Well, I mean the the production of it, but but if you are not aware, and you want to, and you want to know, well, uh, I'd be happy to explain to you all. So, Artemis Fowl was supposed to come out in August twenty nineteen, and even ha ha had a trailer released uh, pretty early on. Uh, I mean the teaser trailer in uh, in late twenty eighteen. Yeah, that's like that two years or at least probably one and three-fourths years uh, before this movie actually came out and uh, yeah I yeah the, the DJ trailer sucked yeah man I was like I think this was actually if I'm not mistaken this was actually my least anticipated movie of 2019 yep Artemis Fowl was my least anticipated movie of 2019 and now it became my least anticipated Oh wait, actually technically no no, this was not my least anticipated. I, I forgot. My least anticipated my least anticipated movie of of, of twenty nineteen was uh Dora was that Dora movie, which which um is not as bad as I thought it would be, but uh I, I, I don't I didn't care for it and I don't uh, wanna revisit wanna bother revisiting it. Um and and yes, back to topic, yeah. This is supposed to come out in theaters on August, uh, but then it, it got got delayed two thousand twenty, and uh, and um, a certain Disney movie uh, that that was supposed to come out in two thousand twenty May two thousand twenty Maleficent Mistress of Evil which yeah, um when Artemis Fowl took the the new date of, of May two thousand twenty Maleficent Mistress of Evil uh got pushed uh, to um twenty twenty although not August but October yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that movie, yeah, Malef- Malef- Maleficent, uh, sorry, Maleficent 2 sucked, uh, but, I mean, at least, um, 
But yeah, imagine if, if uh, Maleficent was the movie that went straight to Disney Plus and Artemis Fowl uh, got a theatrical release. Um, yeah. Honestly, I think Maleficent 2, despite that movie sucking, it feels it felt far more uh, theatrical than uh, it felt f- far more theater worthy than art than this. But yes, despite this, this was supposed to come out in May uh, two thousand twenty. Due to COVID, it got it. It went straight to Disney Plus. Uh, to Disney Plus. Uh, so yeah, and now the movie actually released there, and it got so much hate. This is probably the most hated uh, Disney movie ever, or at least one of them. But yeah, no one, no one, not even a single soul liked this movie and said it was good. Yeah, not even a, a, a bit. Not even like decent or anything. They all outright hated it. And rightfully so. Because yeah, I... The moment I, I, I saw the teaser trailer, I knew this movie was gonna fail. And all people are saying, oh, but it doesn't look that bad. It has a stack cast. And it has a great director with Kenna Brana and all yada, yada, yada. But, like, come on. I mean, why Kenna Brana? Uh, he deserves so much better. No, when it comes to Kenna Brana, yes, um, I'm honestly mixed. He's honestly a, a mixed bag of a director. I think he's a much better actor than a director. You know, yeah, I. Then I don't like Thor, the first Thor movie that much. I thought it was extremely boring. Um, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit was uh, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit was was awful, and Murder on the Orient Express was such a major letdown. But but I I didn't I enjoyed the Death in the Nile and the Haunting of Venice, some of other Kenneth Kenneth Branagh's movies, but and. Um, Hamlet, so uh, which and I have seen bits and pieces of Hamlet. Uh, yeah, I've seen bits and pieces of Hamlet. I only watched it for my literature class, uh, which, which I'm studying uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet. Uh, but, but even just with um, the first two hours of the movie, uh, out of the four hour runtime, I can definitely say that Hamlet is the best uh, Kenneth Brother movie. I, I will eventually see, see the, the full movie soon, finish it soon, but yeah. I mean, we'll see when, but. But uh, Artemis Fowl is by far the worst uh, kind of brand movie. But that is an overstatement, honestly. Yeah. And calling Artemis Fowl um, the worst Disney movie is an overstatement, huh? I mean, how, I mean, how could my favorite uh, studio uh, do this? I mean, and, and by the way, if this movie was, was, re- um, was distributed by any other studio, like Warner Bros. or Universal... Or something, something like that, or Sony, it wouldn't have been any better. Um, but yeah, I I gotta say this, Artemis Fowl is my, my my second worst movie of two thousand twenty. Second only to Trolls Band Together, and I know most people put this as their worst movie of two thousand twenty. But in my opinion, I think um, Trolls World Tour is the worst movie of that year. But yeah, Artemis Fowl is second. But not only that, but this is now my second. W- worst movie of all time second only behind the trolls trilogy and i i know i said i put sing to uh, i said sing to is worse than this but honestly i mean don't get me wrong i still stand by uh, my opinion on sing to i i still hate that movie with a burning flaming passion with a b- burning flaming passion and all that stuff but uh i take sing to over artemis foul because oh my god and by the way and also, this is the worst, lo- and I mean, emphasize on worst live action movie I have ever seen in my life. Period. So, anyways, you wanna um, you wanna know um, what positives I have with the film? Nope, no positives, no positives at all. Not even a single slight ounce of positive. Everything about this movie is. All nothing but negatives. Yeah, this movie screams at negatives. Yeah, movie screams at negatives. Yeah, let's let's rip this apart. Uh, so yeah, let me start by say, let me start this off things off by saying, you seriously want thought that this was good enough to release in theaters? Well, thank God for COVID. Uh, 
thank get, thank God for COVID uh, not um preventing this movie from getting it theatrically. So that's actually one good thing I can say about COVID, cause you know these um, cause you know two thousand twenty would have had shit like this, uh, like movies that th- that thinks that it's theater worthy, but actually it's not. Yeah, so thank God, thank God um th- they're able to skip cinemas like actual bad movies like this, uh, because oh boy, if this movie um got a theatrical release um oh boy yeah this uh yeah it i i think this movie would have flopped anyway yeah i think this movie would have flopped either way uh no no doubt about that uh because i mean this this um looks like clearly looks like a straight to streaming movie but so yeah putting this movie in theaters is questionable there's nothing theatrical worthy here um yes uh despite the uh, maleficent the mistress of evil sucking I know I said it's right, but I want to say it again. At least that movie had some cinematic value to it. At least it felt like it, it actually it has some uh, cinematic value to it. Uh, it's kind of, kind of oh, worthy to really to see it on the big screen. And I did see that movie in cinemas, by the way. And yeah, I mean, although if Maleficent 2 got pushed to Disney Plus, if it stayed on its 2020 release date, I personally wouldn't have minded. But yeah, I mean, I I'd rather see I take Maleficent in, in theaters any day over Artemis Fowl. I mean, I I would have skipped this movie in theaters and probably watched it online at either way, cause you know, this movie had competition with other uh releases that that, that released close to it. You know, like uh, Black Widow, uh, Fast Fast Nine, and uh, Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four. Yeah, so yeah, with those movies, uh, I would have skipped this one. Although at the same time, I was also kind of uh, considering uh, watching this in theaters to see how bad it is. But imagine if I actually did that. Yeah, I will admit that based, but the official trailer for Artemis Fall was actually so bad it's good. Yeah, it looked like a so bad it's good movie, despite it still remaining my least anticipated movie of twenty twenty. Yeah, it it's um. Yeah, I I think you know what I mean by that. So yeah, um, oh my god, so yeah. And as for the actual quality of the movie, oh boy, where do I, I where do I even get started with this? First of all, the story is non-existent. Existent. There is barely a, a plot to this. It, it's just basically a uh, Artemis Fowl of finding his father, um, and all that stuff. Um, and he's a criminal mastermind. So yeah, but yeah, there there is no story here uh, at all. It's just. Like it, it doesn't. It, like I can't even remember a lot of that happened in this. Yeah, like it is so hard to remember what even happened in this movie. Oh my god, and yeah, and also yes, there is no structure at all. Like the script is just horrible because of how uh, cheesy the lines are. Like the, the lines are just the codes in this movie are just so laughable. Like it, it is just uh, hilarious uh, that. This is the best that, that they come up with. Uh, the best uh, lines in this. Yeah, it, it is just... Uh, it is just uh, funny. And... Yeah, the, the story makes no sense. Uh, like, nothing felt earned. And, oh, yeah. And guess what? The ending is sequel bait. Uh, yeah, they set up a sequel. An Artemis Fowl uh, cinematic universe here. Yeah. Thank God uh, this movie uh, had the... Uh, no encore uh, to uh, to get a sequel because no one liked this so no one wants to see this uh, movie continue um was Disney even aware that this movie was gonna fail I don't know how this movie even got approved uh, at least has some good quality and also another thing stay faith stay true to the books yeah this movie is nothing like the books I, I remember back in 2021 back in Back in uh, two thousand twenty one, um, I my mom bought me a, a bunch of books to read in summer, and one of the books uh, she bought for me is Artemis Fowl, not the first, the very first Artemis Fowl in the series, but at least one of the Artemis Fowl books, and I read it. And despite the plot of that book being completely different from you know what the movie was supposed to be, I knew that that this movie was unfaithful to the book. Yeah, this is the worst uh, book adaptation, ever. I mean. People hate it. People slam Ready Player One for being uh, nothing like the book, but uh, it's actually faithful in my opinion. Yes, I read the Ready Player One book before watching the movie, 
And I found it to be faithful, but Artemis Fowl, it ain't faithful. Not even a bit. It, it's just the definition of how to ruin the book. In fact, did the writers even actually read the book? I, I doubt it. I don't think they read the book. So yeah, and even if, even as a standalone movie, oh my god, yeah. Like, no, there's no plot, there's no structure, it's, it's a mess. Uh, it's basically just, you know, bits and cuts, bits and cuts, bits and cuts. And yeah, yeah, I think you probably know what, what video I was referencing. If, if you subscribe to this guy, uh, yeah, you, you probably might tell. But if you don't know what video I was referencing, it's uh, Angry Ant Man's uh, review on Captain Marvel, where he's like, bits and cuts, and bits and cuts, and that is basically, basically RMS Fall in a nutshell. Yeah, yeah, there's there's no uh, flow at all. And the visual effects, oh my goodness. Like, you actually, be, Disney apparently thought that they would uh, see crap like this in theaters. Yeah, the visual effects are probably, the visual effects and production value are probably the reason as to why this movie did not de deserve a theatrical release. And uh, putting this on the streaming service is the the best reason. In fact, the fact that this, the fact that this movie was the uh, saved uh, from from getting a theatrical release is probably the one uh, positive I can think of. But yeah, you call this uh, visuals like oh my god, the visuals are horrendous, ugly, cheap looking, just everything wrong with visuals. I think this is the, the this is the worst uh, visual effects in a modern movie. Well, alongside the uh, Justice League uh, twenty seventeen, yeah. It's that bad, and probably the ugliest looking uh, Disney movie. I mean, people say The Flash has the worst uh, visual effects of the decade. Uh, have you seen Artemis Fowl? Now, I, I don't defend The Flash's visuals. I can admit that The Flash had pretty bad visuals, but worst, ugliest visuals of the decade? I don't think so. Yeah, Artemis Fowl uh, takes that title. I mean, the, the CGI of the fairies and dwarves. Uh, <laughs> it's just so funny because of how bad it is. The, the manner, like, the, I mean, the fact that, that most of the movie took place in just one location, it was just... Uh, I mean, in the book, Artemis Fowl was supposed to go on an adventure beyond just the manner. So the fact that this movie... Uh, just took place uh, in the manor. It's just it, it just one location. It's just uh yeah. Oh my god, yeah. It just makes the movie incredibly boring. I mean, you know what could have made this movie better if Artemis Fowl actually went out of the manor, went into the uh went into um the place where his father got trapped in, and actually saved them. But no, he just like he had to uh. Stay in quarantine, quarantine himself in a manner, and just to use every technology he can find in the um in, in the uh, manner to uh, save his father, and then uh, and and then his father just uh in the end his father just uh reappears uh, on the manor. Yeah, what a waste. Yeah, and the movie is basically just Artemis Fall running around. The, it's just Artemis Fall uh, running around here and just doing stuff and. Uh, and, and and then uh, and and by the way, Artemis Fowl is supposed to be a criminal mastermind. I I don't see that. He he's actually just a a straight hero. Artemis Fowl, yeah, he's supposed to be a criminal mastermind, but an anti-hero. But where was that? Yeah, where was that? that like they don't show Artemis Fowl. They just made Artemis Fowl a straight up good character. So in, in this movie, you act you actually don't believe that Artemis Fowl is a criminal mastermind, and. It's probably because of the acting. And that brings me to my next point. Oh my goodness, the acting is embarrassing. What the actual hell were these uh, actors are uh, thinking? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yuck. I, I, like, all the, all, everyone here just uh, sucks. I mean, for the uh, Shaw, worst uh, child performance ever. Uh, I, I don't want to see him in, in any other film again. And uh, Lara McDonald. Well, thankfully, she actually had one good film. Uh, yeah, she actually did have started one good film, which is Belfast. Uh, which yeah, uh, I mean Belfast is uh, probably uh, Ken one of Kenneth Branagh's uh, better films. Uh, and in fact, Belfast is honestly one of one of uh, Kenneth Branagh's uh, best films. Uh, and uh, Lara McDonald, thankfully, she re she gave a good performance in Belfast. But here. Oh my god, her performance is just ridiculous. 
Holly Shore is is um one of the worst uh, female characters ever uh, next to uh Poppy and Viva. Yeah, she just sucks and she is the worst uh, Disney female character. People say Merida is the worst uh, female character in a Disney movie. Well, Holly Shark makes uh, Merida look like Anna and Elsa in comparison. Uh, and Colin Farrell, my god, Colin Farrell, you're a great actor. What did you do to yourself? Yeah, my god, his performance is just laughably, laughably bad. Especially when, when, you, when he gets afraid of being, uh, of being killed by this... Uh, guy in a mask uh, and by the way who the hell was he uh, it's just laughably bad and most of the time he's just dragging himself in this he's just bored like oh, well, just blah 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 yeah you know, you're our son yeah that is basically how he acts uh, thank god uh, Colin Farrell uh, still um, is still able to give good performances after this especially the penguin from the Batman which uh Pen- the Penguin from ba- the Batman is his best performance, uh, period. Uh, um, Judy Dench also, I mean, really, Judy Dench, this is how you follow up your your perfect uh, swan song uh, performance from uh, as M from Skyfall. Yeah, yeah, best uh, Judy Dench performance as M from Skyfall, worst Judy Dench performance, uh, Commander Root in this one. I actually thought the uh, Commander Root was going to be the villain based on the trailer, but yeah, oh yeah, here's a, that's another criticism. The movie can't decide if Commander Root is a, is a villain or not. Yeah, it, it can't decide. But the worst character in the movie has to be Josh Gad's Mulch Diggums. Uh, yeah. Mulch Diggums is the worst Disney character ever. Yep. Yep, worse than than um, Buck Club from Chicken from Chicken Little, which is the worst Disney anime character. But Mulchy Gums is the worst. Like first of all, he has the ugliest uh, design in uh, in in Artemis Fall. He has like uh, the worst uh, design, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean he's like, and he's basically the the, the narrator of the movie, uh, of the movie, and and he's just very creepy. And oh my god, you know the the worst scene. In the film, is when uh, Josh Gad, the uh, like Mulch Diggums, like Larry, pulls out his uh, his mouth uh, on the ground, and he was like, "It's feeding time," and then he just uh, he just you know, um digs himself on on the ground and uh, just eats it, and, and then uh, his uh, and, and then his butt is uh, digging up some sand. Like, what the actual hell? Like, who came up with this idea? Seriously, I, oh my god, the writers said. Uh, the writers and visual effects artists who work on this such I actually you know what I'm not gonna bully them. I wanted to say they should get fired, but honestly I don't wanna go as far as uh, bullying uh, the uh, people behind it because I know they work hard on this or did they work hard because because you know the script honestly felt like it was written by AI, honestly. Yeah, just well actually you know, maybe not really because if this movie if a movie is written by AI uh it would have like had had a um, simple and formulaic uh, plot line because a that's what that's what AI, AI I don't think AI would, would write a, a confusing as hell uh messy and convoluted uh story like this um. But yeah, and you know the saddest part about Malt Dickinson's character is that uh, this is Josh Gad's career follow up to his best performance Olaf in Frozen Two. Yep. This is, uh, yep, but uh, Josh Gad was previously in my favorite movie of all time, Frozen 2. And then he falls it up with Artemis Fowl, and this piece of crap. Josh Gad, what the hell, man? I mean, I mean, how could Olaf, Olaf uh, be in this? Uh, wow, I mean, yeah, imagine if Kristen Bell or Tina Menzel signed up for this shit. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, but I think... Idina Menzel actually did sign up to, to be in, in another crappy uh, movie of this decade following up her performance in Frozen 2. And I will certainly get to that movie. I will rent this movie at some point, but yeah. Right now, um... Right now, yeah, um... Yeah, I mean, it's Josh Guy just embarrassing himself, and yeah. And the action scenes? Oh, oh, oh my god. It is... This... I mean... What can I say about the action scenes? This 
is the death of action. Now, action is my favorite genre. I, I mean, there's those, there is so, still great action movies to this day. You know, like John Wick Chapter 4 and Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 and, and, and uh, most of the, and the MCU as well and like superhero movies. There's still great action movies, but this is not how you do actions. This is a perfect example of how to not do action scenes. This is the worst act. All of the action scenes in this movie are the worst action scenes in this movie. Specifically, the action scenes when um when Artemis Fowl and, and the Butler guy was like um uh, what we're, we're facing we're fighting off against the the fairies uh, from invading their house. <laughs> I mean, oh my god, it is laughably bad. You know, the you know the um camera angle when they shot the action scenes is just laughable, and the the choreograph is is hilariously bad, and uh, and I and I was like um pissed off, and even and, and was that the same scene as the it's feeding time scene? I'm not sure. I but, but I don't care. And honestly, I actually did not even bother rewatching this movie. Uh. Then after this one, I know normally I I I rewatch uh, movies. Uh, I I I I rewatch uh, movies uh, before I review or edit them. But uh, um, but for this one, I did only watch the the first five minutes. I was like, I oh, screw it. Uh, screw it. I'm, I'm not. And I just uh, instantly gave up after five minutes. I was like, okay, I'll just uh, watch some clips so so I I can refresh my mind on this movie and and, and know what to say about it. So yeah. Oh boy and. And yeah, the ending is is, is anticlimactic. We get this w- less than a minute action scene against this dwarf, and then the Artemis Fowl uh, suddenly uh is able to uh cr- to crack the code uh, to be able to bring his father back, and then his father um uh, like he, they make the audience thinks that the father dies, right? Nope, uh, he just comes back like. How the hell did, did the father even now come back, magically come back? Uh, that just makes no sense. It, it's just so stupid. Uh, oh my god. Uh. Oh yeah, also another thing. Um, Juliet Butler, um, like, what does she have to do with this movie? What does she have to do with this movie? She does nothing despite being Butler's uh, um, daughter, but that's basically it. I mean, yeah, so yeah. Woo, oh man. Yeah. So yeah, overall, Artemis Fowl is uh, the worst uh, Disney movie of all time. The worst live action movie I have ever seen, and my second worst movie of all time behind the Trolls trilogy. I mean, I can't believe Disney um Disney um made this. And you know what? This is not a Disney movie, man. This is not Disney. This is. This I, I refuse to believe that this is even a Disney movie in the first place. It ain't Disney. I, 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 I don't believe it because I don't think Disney would ever do something like this. And I hope they don't do it again. But but yeah, that's what yeah man. And, and you know what Disney maybe stop uh, trying to adapt books uh, like un- unless if it's animated that then it it will be fine. But yeah, Disney just maybe stop trying to screw over with books. I mean first with a wrinkle in time which is also a disaster that I, I'd love to rant on one day and and uh, not and uh, now this one yeah this yeah I mean I thought a wrinkle in time was bad but this just takes the cake uh, so yeah with that said I'm gonna give RMS file a zero zero stars out of five one of the worst movies ever Woo! Woo! Ah, uh, that was good, man. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering why did I write an Artemis file, it, it's just for um Disney Week. Um, yes, I'm also gonna be writing on some horrible Disney movies too. Um, technically, um, I I initially thought that this this was going to be my the only Disney rant that I will rant uh, on the. Uh, Disney Disney Movie Week, uh, and on this on Disney Month on my channel. Yes, no, this is still Disney Month uh, technically. So yeah, um, yeah, but but this is supposed to be the only one. But now I think I'm going to be ranting on another Disney disaster later on this month. Uh, maybe, but maybe not. So yeah, I already mentioned that movie, so I don't need to say what it is. So yeah, 
that's all for my Brandon Artemis file. Uh, what is what are your thoughts on this movie? I mean, do I need to ask? Do I even need to ask that? I mean, everyone hates this movie. I don't know a single person who likes this movie, but but do you actually find some enjoyment in this movie? Because my mom actually likes this movie. I will say that my mom likes it. Uh, so yeah, um, and but yeah, I will say. Is this your least favorite Disney movie of all time, or do you think there are some Disney movies that are you consider worse than this? Uh, so yeah, comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for a much more positive review uh, on my channel. And uh, yeah, since I, I I did a I did a rant like this, I think um let I'm gonna be bringing some positive positivity with my channel as I'm going to be reviewing. West Side Story, uh, the Steven Spielberg uh, remake version. Uh, I think it's a, I think it's perfect for me to review that uh, since uh, both Rachel Zegler and uh, Ariana DeBose both have a new movie coming out uh, this month. Uh, so yeah, and also West Side Story is still a Disney movie, so uh, it's gonna be another uh, addition to my uh, Disney uh, content month on my, on my channel. So yeah, bye guys.